Hi everyone, Roy Oshrov here, and this is the second part of my recommended books collection. Um, let's just start with the first one. Um, Patterns of Enterprise Application Architecture. A great book. I would highly recommend it. I learned so much from this book. Um, one of the first questions that I had when I was starting to work with databases was how do you um, how do you uh, uh, adapt the relational database stuff to the object oriented stuff how do you model inheritance in the database stuff like that and there's a lot that I learned from this so the whole data layer thing was really really interesting and if you want to understand how object relational mappers work the mapper patterns is here as well there is a lot of other stuff I would highly recommend it to any developer who wants to understand how big applications uh, may work or how to better design a real-world application Next one is code, the hidden language of computer hardware and software. Now, the nice thing about this is that it really talks about how things are running, and from the lowest bits to how stuff gets compiled and so on. So this is how code works, basically. So it's great for really, really um, low-level geeks like me. Beautiful Code. Beautiful Code is a great book uh, in that um, it uh, it shows you examples of very dense, very hard to read code, uh, and then calls it beautiful. So this is beautiful in the uh, more like um, obfuscated C contest code beautiful sense. Uh, but there is one chapter here by Michael Feathers which does have very, very interesting uh, things to say about the design of fitness and stuff like that. So there is some definitely some uh, merit to this book and I would recommend it, if only to get a perspective about how other people uh, write code um, and stuff that some people find beautiful and some people actually find offensive. Um, and there is definitely this kind of hackery here as well. For example, there's some, like, those, the fastest algorithm for graphics and games, are very well known, used by designers and so on, um, where some magic number somebody makes all difference between hugely uh, speedy uh, implementation and something uh, even more disastrous. So this is like beautiful hacks, more like it, but very interesting. Rapid development, uh, I'm not sure I'd recommend it today, but I'm going to talk about it because this is one of the books that got me started understanding how things work. When I first started working as a developer in, oh, I think it was 12 years ago, somewhere, I was working at this place and I, I realized that I have no idea what it is I'm doing and people actually gave me stuff to work on. So I started asking other people how to do stuff, and no one really knew what they're doing. So I started reading a lot of books. This was one of them. And I realized that no one really knows what they're talking about, because all the books kept saying different things about the same concepts, uh, opposites, views, and so on. What this book did is it talked about various models of how to run development, spiral model, waterfall, and stuff, so on, why some work, and so on. And the whole idea of spiral, where you can see a lot of it in Agile, the iteration concept and all that stuff, does exist here. There's a second edition of this, and Steve McConnell is definitely a genius. So it's good to see the roots of a lot of things that you can see today, but definitely it's not the book I'd recommend. Just an interesting tidbit. If you if you have it or you can read it, you can see some ancient history, if you will. But very interesting. Test Driven Development, by example, by Kent Beck. This is the book that got me started on TDD, and it's really a great book about the practice. It doesn't talk about all the stuff that I uh, talked about in art and unit testing. It's not that mature. But it talks about TDD, the practice, and I got a lot out of this, along with uh, um, James Newkirk, TDD with Microsoft.net, which I will show in the next uh, section. 
so very very interesting still valid today uh, to get the, the the basics it's a thin book so you definitely should go and read it and understand the basic concepts that Kent back had TDD didn't really change much as far as I'm concerned since then uh, behavior driven development definitely made some dents uh, in the some of the ideas but it's all based on the b same basics you want to understand BDD you gotta know where it came from design patterns uh, if you don't have this book definitely go out and get it because it's uh, it's one of those books and you you see a lot of people uh, uh, after reading it running around looking for design patterns so it's one of those books when you read it and say oh yeah I've done that oh that has a name and so on and so on so it's a good book uh, it's one of the basics that you need to know as a developer as a shared language um, it's not the only one, but it's one definitely one to get started. There's another one which I've already given away called um, Head First Design Patterns. It's a very readable version uh, of the, stuff, the same content in this book, or relatively the same content. Get both of them, if only to understand the difference between how old this is and how the new one is written. But I found this readable as well. I was a VV developer when I was reading this. There are a lot of examples in C++ and Java. But I still got the main ideas. So it's not a bad book, regardless of the language that you read, uh, that, you, uh, that you use. Definitely one of the basics. And if you already have it in work and you haven't read it, I would recommend reading it just to see how stuff gets done. Um, flyweight pattern was really interesting to me. And two points, if you can mention an implementation of the flyweight pattern with the .NET framework. And there is definitely one. Oh man, this is one of my favorites. I very, very much hold true today. Pragmatic Programmer. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is one of the best books for programmers ever made. A lot of the things that I do are based on this, and I read this, I think, over 10 years ago. What was this written? I'm not sure. Um, yes, it was definitely written a while ago. Anyway, um, so first of all, what I like about it, it's black. When I tried to make Manning print out my book and I wanted to have a black uh, outing of this stuff um, but they refused and this is the book that I had in mind it's a pragmatic programmer I want uh, I want to, to look as good as this book what does this teach you teach you how to be pragmatic as a programmer how to be good how to develop the, how to take your passion and do something with it if you're a developer what to learn how do you get better and so on it's like internal coaching if you will a lot of good stuff here The Deadline is a cool book. It's from Tom DeMarco, the same guy who wrote uh, People Wear. And it's, uh, it's a fictional story that someone who has to manage a couple, uh, couple of projects, which are the same, but with different results, with different teams, different, uh, in, uh, different um, conditions. And it's uh, basically a situation which you could never have in real life. If you, could re if you could say, what if I did the same project, but totally differently in terms of methodology, would it work the same? Because in, in reality, no two projects really are the same. So this still holds for today. That's it for now. Um, next time, we'll talk about uh, more books. Cheers.